Welcome everyone to our resource YYC Lunch and Learn. Today we have Ed Britton to, as our speaker. And in case you are not aware, Resource YYC is a co-working community where we have professional office spaces, dedicated desks, boardrooms, and community areas. So if you're ever in need of that, please come join us and see what we're all about. All right, over to you, Ed. Okay, thanks so much, Rosemary. And, and thanks to all of you for, for joining us. And, and I thought I'd better give you a warning at the beginning of this. I'm a really boring presenter, so you might want to participate just out of, you know, self-defense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, smarter goals and the commitment equation. And so what this is really all about is setting worthwhile goals and actually achieving them. You know, and here we are sort of at the beginning of 2022, and you might be feeling guilty about some New Year's resolutions that you set, and maybe maybe this will help. <clears throat> so I wouldn't be surprised if, if many here have heard about SMART goals. Uh, SMART goals have been around for a long time, you know, like 30 years. They were invented 30 years ago, and uh, they got really popular because it helped people to set a goal that had some uh, some definition to it, you know, and uh, um, enabled people to achieve goals and achieve the, the goal that they wanted to. And so, in you know, in, here in this workshop, we are going to talk about the smart part of it, S M A R T. But we're going to add two more letters, the ER to it, smarter goals. Smarter goals are better goals than smart goals. All right? Yeah. So why don't we just do a little thing in the chat, just so you tell me, um, give, give me some context. If you have heard of smart goals, say yes. If you haven't heard of smart goals, say no. Then I'll know how much to talk. You just put it in the chat. Have you heard of SMART? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. That kind of thing, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, we're half and half. We're half and half with this. All right, good. Thank you. That is helpful then. So I will, I'll, I'll explain what the SMART goal is first, then we'll graduate to the smarter goal. Okay. Um, Rosemary, can I share my screen? Okay, here goes. All right. Here we are. So this is basically the smart goal. Okay. And uh, it's it's an acronym S M A R T right, <clears throat> and they spe and the smart stands for these different words. So, if you're setting a smart goal, not just an ordinary goal, then the F the S stands for specific. We want you to be specific about the goal. So that means uh, making sure that you describe it in some detail. Uh, a ex simple example is you could say, I want to get better on the computer. That's my goal. Well, that's not, that's not very specific, right? So you could be, make it specific by saying, hmm, I would like to learn how to use a PC. I've used a Mac all my life. I've never used a PC. So I want to learn to use a PC. Ed, I just want to interrupt you. There's a lot of background noise coming in. Oh, okay. I'll try closing the door. See if that's better. Okay, try that. <laughs> Thanks, Rosemary. Yeah, and so you see, I want to learn how to use a PC. And then you might say, well, what software is going to be most useful to me? Oh, I think the Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft Suite would be, uh, Office Suite would be best, best for me to learn Word and Excel and PowerPoint and 
those three in particular. Okay, and I would like to learn to use them so that I can prepare a report and a PowerPoint pr presentation to go along with it and then record it so that it can be uh, posted on the internet. Whoa, now that's really specific. That's a much better goal than just, I wanna use the computer. So that's what specific is about. Measurable, <clears throat> ideally we, we have numbers to it. So you might say, oh, I want to make uh, 20 sales this month, for example. Or I would like to increase my income by $20,000 this year, okay? Or I would like to add uh, uh, 20 uh, contacts to my network. You know, so you try to put a, a number to it. That's ideal. But sometimes, sometimes they're not very uh, amenable to uh, having a number put to it, you know? so. You, you might you might say I will, I'd like to hmm I'd like to improve my social media posts um, and but not really get necessarily get more people but just make them better posts and so you might say well let's see to do that I could make more more video posts and so you, you could say well maybe I want to do uh, five video posts a month, you know, and so you figured out a way to make it uh, measurable, put a number to it. Achievable, uh, impossible, impossible is pointless. You set a really good bit high goal and you think, you know, the chances of me getting that are just about zilch. So it's not motivating. Because I can't get it anyway. No matter how hard I try, I'm going to be disappointed. So you want to make it achievable. At the same time, you want to be don't want to make it so easy that it's just going to happen no matter what. You know, you you need that sweet spot. Um, uh, it makes me stretch, but if I stretch, I'll go, I'm going to achieve it. So you want it to be achievable. Relevant is an important concept. It has to matter. And really, it has to matter the most. So most relevant. You have this idea of good, better, best, you know. You want the goal that you choose or goals that you choose to be the most relevant goals that are possible. So you, you get the biggest bang for your buck, right? The biggest reward for your effort. That's relevant. And then time bound, you want to set a certain time when you get this goal. So I wanna get it by the end of the month or I wanna get it by uh, uh, you know, July 31st or something like that. You, you need, you need a, a date to achieve this goal by, okay? And that is the time-honored SMART goal process. Yeah. Does anybody have um, experience using SMART goals? Has anybody actually used them before? You could put it, you could just put it in the chat. No, okay. Okay, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's worthwhile you get better goals out of this the goal can actually become the plan um, as you develop each area of smart you you develop a plan to uh to get the goal you know so it's more than just something in the in the uh <clears throat> yeah it, it's more than just something in the ether you've got something nice and solid to work with. Okay, but that was 30 years ago. Now, smarter goals. Let me tell you where the idea of smarter goals came from. 
So um, over the past couple of years, approximately, I've been developing a program called Not Retirement. And what I wanted to do in Not Retirement was to give people uh, uh, tools and coaching that would enable them to live life big after stepping away from the job. And this is a new thing. It's, it's a new kind of coaching that hasn't been done. And so I had to develop this thing from the ground up, you know. And when I came to the section on setting goals, I thought, gee, this doesn't, it doesn't feel complete. It's like in the 30 years since SMART goals was invented, we have come along. You know, we're concerned about the environment and concerned about other countries and people who aren't doing as well as we are. Um, <clears throat> people had the experience of working toward goals and just flagging halfway through because they got tired of it. Um, they were setting smart goals, but something was missing. So I thought, well, one of the things that's missing is fun. And the research shows that if people enjoy a goal, then they're far, far more likely to achieve it, right? If it's fun, if it's, you know, climbing this mountain behind me and you like climbing mountains, <laughs> I don't know why it hurts a lot, <laughs> then you're much more likely to, to reach the goal if you're enjoying it. So the fun part is important. And then I thought, you know, uh, businesses and organizations now have to be sensitive to the environment, to social considerations, and to governance. Uh, you, you might see these three letters, um, uh, ESG, ESG systems in companies, right? So is your company, does your ha company have uh, environmental values? Do they have social values? Do they have governance values in them? It's not just enough to make your bottom line anymore. You need to have this stuff. And so 30 years ago, I don't think there was any such thing as this ESG uh, requirement. And I said, now it's a big requirement. It's a big deal. Some people make their investment decisions based on ESG. So that needs to be in your goals. So fun. Well, F didn't really work at the end of SMART, right? Smart, no, didn't work. <laughs> so I thought, well, how about energizing? You know, because that's what fun is, it's passion, right? Energizing. So let's use the E. And then for uh, the ESG part, I thought, well, that's being responsible. So that's ER, smarter, that's smarter goals. So the smarter goal concept actually came out of the curriculum development for my not retirement coaching business. That's where it came from. So I'm going to put this up now so you can see that. There we are. So that smart goals and this is what the the smarter a goal acronym looks like specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound, energizing, and responsible. Okay, now not all goals are energizing, even if they're important, even if there are all the other stuff, they might be kind of boring, you know? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe you find uh, computer programming, for, for example, boring, like I do. <laughs> I think it's boring. Some people seem to love it. They stay up all night and eat donuts. <laughs> but I think it's boring. So what do you do if you got a boring goal that's important, needs to be done, but you know, it's sure not very energizing. What do you do? I mean, all of you have been that in that situation, you know, your mom's making you do the piano lessons <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Moms are important. Without them, there wouldn't be any music in the world. 
<laughs> yeah. So what do you do? You got a boring goal. You all have boring goals. I've got boring goals. What do you do to make them not boring? Any ideas? Sorry. What do you do if you got a boring goal? Or if your poor child has to do piano lessons? What do you do? <laughs> I had to do piano lessons. I have a lot of empathy. <laughs> yeah. How do you make it fun and energizing and passion filled? We could even, you know, we could even do that little example. How do you encourage your child to do practice their piano or whatever their instrument is? <laughs> Not sure I've been avoiding it. As it seems like a chore. It is a chore. <laughs> Not seems like. <laughs> well, what could you do? You got this kid and you you, you say, you say, You'll thank me when you grow up, right? That's what you say. <laughs> trying to make, trying to get them to do their music lessons. I'm gonna ta ta type something in the chat. I could say it, but I'm just gonna type. Stickers, playtime after, sit with them. Yeah, all right, good. That works, they've all been tried on me. How about play play beautiful music? If you practice, you'll be able to do that. That works too. That's actually what my mom and dad did. That's how they got me to practice my various musical instruments. Wow, that's amazing. What instrument is that, dad? Oh, you know, that's an oboe. And so I'd go practice my oboe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I play it, it doesn't sound like that. You might have heard of gamification. <clears throat> this word, this is one thing that even companies do, and you can buy programs. You can go online, buy apps and programs uh, and gamification. And so it takes something that's kind of inherently boring and makes a game out of it. <clears throat> so you get stickers and you get points and you get prizes and you compete with the guy over in the other cubicle and you know you talk back and forth and tell each other jokes and stuff it's their their apps or computer programs and they actually you know do their best to make boring things fun and they actually work some people want um people people who uh, website visitors to explore their site and see everything in their, their site so they gamify their website and if you you know visit so many pages of their website you get a coupon or something like that and they have a little they have a little bar on the side and as you accumulate pages the bar raises up to this star and then you hit the star and you get the coupon and so things like that uh, making it fun that way okay so that's one way to energize it now, another way to use this, the SMARTER acronym is um, you, you have it in front of yourself and then you say, for each of these letters, I have to make sure that I fill something in well. And it can help you to not miss things. So, uh, for example, the R, the, the responsible piece. So you might be developing a business and you get it all done and it's beautiful and there's high demand for it and you make lots of money and stuff like this. And then you put you, you, you put up the smarter acronym and you say, but wait a minute, I haven't thought about the R. And it isn't really an inherently, you know, socially responsible thing to do. I'm making gummy bears and selling them, you know, there's, <laughs> where's the ESG in that? There's no ESG in that. And so you can put some thought into it and say, okay, well, 
I'm going to uh, donate 2% of my profit or, you know, uh, 50 cents every package of uh, gummy bears for, uh, um, you know, poor children in Africa or something like that, uh, charity water. And so that you can use the R to help you to remember. So that's smarter goals. That's smarter goals. Okay. Yeah. Now the next the next thing is is interesting. It's commitment. And uh, so you can go ahead and set your goals, your smarter goals, but it's commitment that's that's actually going to achieve the goal. Okay. And having an energizer in your goal, making it fun, is a big piece of it. Uh, but it may not be it may not be enough. We turn to what's called the commitment equation in order to do this. And with the commitment equation, you can actually manage how committed you are to a goal. You might want to usually we want to be more committed, but actually something may have gone kind of awry and we it, it is wise to let go of all or some of the commitment to, uh, on a per, particular goal um, in the business world you may have a commitment to a to developing a per, per particular product and it's going really well boy it's, it's beautiful it's better than you thought it would be and you're you're getting close to launch date and you think oh i'm going to be so proud of myself when this goes out i just love this however unbeknownst to you a large competitor is developing a very similar product at the same time and they're in a better market position so when you release your product you're probably going to get stomped on by this big competitor. Um, maybe it's a bit better. Maybe they they've just got a better handle on the market, blah, blah. Maybe you shouldn't release the product. But you're so excited about it. How do you decommit when that's the wise thing to do? Um, another another example that's often used is um, the example of relationships. You know, <clears throat> you got this cutie that you're going out with and uh but you know you get into it a little bit and it's it's not feeling so good anymore you know not so cute <laughs> anymore um but you've sort of developed maybe uh, habits or comfort or something and uh it's 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 holding you in to something you know you shouldn't be held into you, it's wise to decommit, but how do you do that? Okay, so there's lots of situations where you want to increase or decrease commitment, and the commitment equation is the ticket. Let me let me show you the commitment equation. Okay. Okay. My computer just has to catch up. That's me here. Can you see that? Oh, there it caught up, but too much. All right, well, you can see this one. That's all right. So this is the commitment equation. You end up with a certain level of commitment over here on the on the far right that uh, green check that's your commitment and you're trying to either increase it or decrease it. So um, on the far left the the flowers there uh, they represent benefits, or you can say bouquet, if you want. Uh, just to remember and then. So you take the benefits of a, of achieving the goal or preserving the relationship or whatever, but subtract the disbenefits or the prickles. 
bouquet minus prickles. That, that balances benefits against disbenefits, good against bad, all right? And so that gives you one sort of value. And then you add to that investments. So investments tend to make you more committed. If you put more money into something, if you put more time into something, then it will make you less want to abandon that. You know, oh, I spent $10,000 on this course or whatever. And so I have to finish it. I can't waste all that money, you know, or I've worked on this project for 200 hours already. I have to finish it. I can't let all of that go to waste. Those are investments and they tend to increase your commitment. And then finally we come to options and options are different ways that you can get to the same thing. Uh, and so you might say, well, I can quit doing this. You know, I can quit practicing the piano because I can sing songs and get nice music too. And so if you have more options, then you are less likely to commit to a particular one. If you have fewer, fewer options or no options at all, then you don't have a choice. You have to commit to the one that you're working on. That's how the commitment equation works. Okay. Yeah. And it really works. I have, I have, I use and have, have used and do use this one. Okay. So, you know, you could say you've got a relationship that, that you know you got to get out of, right? There are still some benefits. Maybe there's the benefit of comfort there, you know, and uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's some economic benefit involved. Um, you get good birthday presents or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, there's some benefits, right? And, but the disbenefits, you know, they're just not looking good. And so, yeah, uh, you have invested in, we all invest in, in relationships. So, and options, they don't really have any other options. And so the commitment equation is t keeping you tied into this thing. What can you do? Well, let's go to the benefits. You know, I, I feel comfortable. It's, you know, it's nice. And yeah, there's some financial thing here too. And so, all right. So you want to start reducing the benefits. So take the pictures down. You know, no, no, more, no more pictures online or on the walls and stuff. You take the pictures down so that you lose that that reinforcing benefit of it right and oh maybe there's somebody else to make meals or or go go out to eat with you know so go on a diet or something <laughs> so that the benefit becomes a dis you know you subtract from the benefit and then you can add to the disbenefits and one thing you can do is, and this might not sound very mentally healthy, but it does work. You can just focus on the, the bad stuff, <laughs> the disbenefits. You make a list and say, this is why I should get out of this relationship and put it in the front of your journal or whatever you do. And so that you emphasize that piece of it. Investment, stop investing. Just stop putting time into it, stop putting money into it or whatever else. Reduce the investment and understand that the investment that you've put in be, uh, before is not doing you any good anymore, so just let it go. And then options, well, maybe you start, you know, join an online dating club or something. I don't know what you do, <laughs> but you open up the options and it, and if you do those things, if you work the commitment equation like that, it reduces your commitment and it makes it easier for you to do the right thing. 
The same sort of thing can be applied in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> that product that you love so much and you thought is going to make you the, you know, a boss of the whole company. And, <clears throat> and then it looks like it's, it's going to be, it's going to go bad because of what your competitor is developing, you know, well, you, you've, you got to convince yourself that the benefits versus the disbenefits part of the equation is now negative and make yourself a chart and convince yourself of that. Stop putting money into the development. Stop assign people who are on the development to team to other places. So you're withdrawing uh, benefits from that. The options piece, well, get busy thinking of and designing a, a, different, a different product to get excited about that will reduce the that will reduce the commitment okay but on the other hand you can use the commitment equation to increase commitment as well um, i'll tell you a story about climbing a mountain because i use the equipment I use the commitment equation to get to the top of this mountain, not the one behind me. I've got a picture of it. It's the Golden Hind. I'm going to show it to you. It's cool. It's a cool mountain. There it is. Okay. Not working very fast. We'll wait for it. We'll wait for it. Uh, maybe there's a different screen I can get get up that'll work faster. Try this. Okay. Yeah, this is better. There's the mountain. This is it. That is the Golden Hind. Ah, oh, what's it doing this for? Okay, that's the Golden Hind. Cool mountain. I love it. And it's the highest mountain on Vancouver Island. That's where I grew up. So I always wanted to climb this mountain. It was sort of a dream of mine. And uh, we, it's way back in the back country. It's not an easy mountain to get to. That's probably the hardest thing about it. And so we had planned six days, six days into this hike. Uh, three, you know, three days in and, and three days out. Uh, but the first day of the hike was really bad. It was all cloudy and rainy and socked in, and we just couldn't go anywhere on the first day. We just had to stay at home. That's what we did. So now the hike becomes a five day hike. And we're going to have to have a lot more commitment to do this hike in five days, rather than the six days that we had planned, you know. And so well, do we want to do it? What it means is it means hiking 12 hours a day with 50 pounds on your back in mountainous terrain, uh, uh, going about one, one kilometer an hour. That's about the speed you can go in this kind of terrain, you know? So, yikes. <laughs> we want to punish ourselves in that way. And so, uh, we thought, yeah, we still want to do this. We still want to do this, but it's going to take just so much commitment in order to do it. And, and so we reminded ourselves, we went to the benefits, you know, the, the bouquet of flowers and said, uh, it's the highest mountain. We, we talked about this among us. It's the highest mountain on Vancouver Island. It's a beautiful mountain. And we really want to do it. So we talked it up. We increased the benefits in our own mind. And we thought there's, it's an unparalleled view. And we said, and we made affirmations. I don't know if you've heard of positive affirmations, but you know, it's the a little engine that could idea. I, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I know I can, I know I can. We can do this. <laughs> we can put 50 pounds on our backs and we can hike for 12 hours a day um, 
and then get up early in the morning the next day and we can do the same and we can do this for five days in a row we can get up to the top of that mountain and back back down so we worked on the bouquet part of it okay and then the disbenefits the disbenefits are frankly the the pain and the risk and blah blah all of this stuff okay and so we dipped into our packs and said we don't have to do six days we only have to do five so we're going to take out the supplies that we would have needed for six days and lighten our packs so we reduced the disbenefits and that that balanced that part of the equation all right and then and then we had to deal, deal with investment <clears throat> how do you deal with investment on a hike well we thought to ourselves if we make it to the first camp we'll have invested a day of pain <laughs> already right and then we'll get to the second camp and then we'll get to the base camp if we can do the first three days if we can invest that much in this hike then we've got it because because the top of the mountain is not that far from the base camp and of course if we've invested three days in this we're going to get to the top and so we stopped thinking about a five a five day hike and just thought about the three day hike and put that in our mind and then and so it wasn't so hard to do the three days we well it was hard but you know not as hard in our head and and so we did that so we get to uh the hike you know or we get to the base camp on the third day and early in the morning on the third day a whole bunch of horrible things happened but i won't go into that <laughs> we got in there and uh, and there we are in the base camp and just to our left is mount berman now mount berman is a pretty cool mountain too it's an option right remember the commitment equation and the option on the end we could just go up Mount Berman. It's closer. It's not as high. You know, there's a good view. It's an option. And so Mount Berman kind of pulled us away from the Golden Hive. So we sat down in the mor that morning and we said to ourselves, we could do Mount Berman. However, Mount Berman is not the highest mountain on Vancouver Island. And we just wouldn't have that. We wouldn't have that to say anymore. In fact, it's not even one of the highest. It's kind of maybe, I don't know, eighth or ninth highest. <clears throat> and so we said, it's just not really an option. We, we took the option off the table. <clears throat> so we worked on that part of the commitment equation. And that boosted our commitment to do the hind do the whole golden hind and so we were close enough that we could do it that day on the third day and so we just went up and down on the third day finished it and then we had two days to get out so that's an example of how you can use the uh, the equip the uh, commitment equation in in these kinds of situations and you can apply it to virtually anything virtually anything. Does anybody have an example, something that they would like to commit to or decommit to, because it's not wise anymore. Um, and let's, uh, let's say, well, I have this commitment, let's see how we can use the commitment equation to increase your co commitment toward a certain goal. I'd like to write another book. Oh, that's cool, Adam. Good for you. Can, can you give us a little bit of background? 
Ada, what, what book have you written already and what book would you like to writ, write? Yeah, you're muted. You're muted, Ada. Hi, everyone. Um, so I have, um, I, I'm writing a collection of books, 101 Quips and Quotes. Um, I've written four so far. Oh, great. And um, yeah, the fourth one just came out a few weeks ago in February. Um, and I'd like to write a fifth one. And I'm still debating between continuing my series, which I will continue for a long while, or doing a step change and writing a poetry book. Yeah. Um, right. So it's all here. Yes. Yes. I just need to. All so right. I just thought I should give you just an example. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's a good example. Um, yeah. I, I I wrote a book a while ago, and uh, so I can empathize. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can empathize with that. That's great. All right. And so it sounds to me, Ada, like first of all, you have a decision to make. Is that right? Which which you're going to write? Are you going to do the poetry? Or are you going to continue the series? Is that right? Yes. 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 Yeah. And so there there are other methods for for making for making decisions. Um, uh, we won't really go into that right now. But suppose that you have made the decision for mm -hmm. the purposes of this exercise. Yeah. And, and which one would it be? Would it be the poetry or the next book, number five? I'd say poetry. That's a step change. Okay. Okay. Let's which say is, the poetry. Does that sound yeah. interesting? Right. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. And so you need commitment. What do you need the commitment for? What What kind of commitment does it take to get this done? Start writing. <laughs> for starters. Yeah. That's right. And write day after day after day, right? Mm -hmm. And get through the blocks. Yeah. 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 And then do it again when you when you lose the file. That's happened to me, but we won't talk about that because I want to keep this a positive call. <laughs> I had yeah. a computer. I see now I'm going to talk about it. I had a computer that you'd click save, but it wouldn't save. This is back in the olden days, you know. Man, I can imagine. Yeah, Go lost back. a few files along the way. Yeah, that's right. So, okay, back to your poetry book. Mm -hmm. right, so let's use the commitment equation. Then first we talk about the benefits, right? Yeah. So talk to me about the benefits and how you can expand them. Hmm. That's part of the problem here, isn't it? Um. So the first benefit um which is almost intrinsic is it's me pushing myself out of my comfort zone yeah um so that, that's the first benefit it's showing me that i can grow and achieve things that i wanna um the second benefit is all my readers will be encouraged you know to push themselves out of the comfort zone because this is evidence that someone can push themselves out of their comfort zone. Right. Yeah. So that's a benefit, you know, for the, the people who you, you work for, right? Your, mm -hmm. your clients kind of. My readers, yeah. Readers, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, how can you make those benefits more solid and believable and front of mind? Um, so you remember them? I mean, I, I, well, I have stepped out of my comfort zone now and again. So it's not like this would be my first time of stepping out of my comfort zone. All right. You have evidence that you can do this successfully. Yes. I mean, I have four books under my belt already, right. though slightly oh. different, but yeah. Yeah. There you go. And what if you get, you know, partway into this and you think, oh man, I don't want to do this anymore. What would help you? Um, 
Um, yeah, I can think of many reasons why I don't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not on the disco. <laughs> <of the problem. laughs> Sorry, back to the question. Um, I, I think, I think. I'm um, losing you, girl. <laughs> I think reminding myself that um, I can do this and I'm not the only one who will benefit from it. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like thinking about that bigger purpose. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's hey, try nice. writing things down. These mm -hmm. are the benefits. And then when you start feeling bad, you can just go back and read why you did this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Remembering your why, you know, it's almost like starting with your why. Yeah. yeah. How else can you make it visual? Most of us are visual. And so yes, yes, yes. visual representation, it helps hugely. Mm -hmm. I actually have, um, I call it my mission map. I love on it. My, on my wall. Yes. And I have, I have the pictures of my current books i need to update it since the fourth book is out let me see yes i don't know if you can see it uh, I can okay see well that. this is what it looks like yeah. so it has little boxes of each of the covers Wonderful. and then so i just so that might be yeah i need to update this okay. excellent i think idea. i brought it up. i'll yeah. update that update it yeah and you know something that you can do the first thing that you do is create the cover. You create the cover of the book and you put it up on the wall. Okay. Right in front of okay. you. Okay, I'll do that. Create yeah. cover. That's right. That's your vision board. You yeah. Cover. And, and you yeah. say, I love you, cover. I love you. I am going to dress you with beautiful pages. Okay, that, that's a really, 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 really good idea. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because even the, the ones I have written, I had a start cover. It it evolved, but you need to start somewhere. So yeah, that's, that's right. a great idea. Yeah, it doesn't that's have to be a final cover. Thank it's you. just something to inspire you. Yeah. yeah. That's Thank you. Great. Well, that's excellent. All right. Now... Another Thanks, thing, Lisa. <laughs> another thing that you can do is tell somebody who matters to you. Yeah, I actually, um, I think that's going to happen in another couple of weeks because I'm doing a video. So I have a YouTube channel that is tied to my books. So yeah. I'm doing a video where I'm going to blab it out. So, yeah. Okay, well, you've you told all of us. Yes. <laughs> all of us on this call now and so you're going to lose so much face if you don't do this it'll be awful <laughs> not to worry it's not the first time but yeah i hear you <laughs> so that's another way that you can increase your commitment you can tell somebody else who's positive in your life and will encourage you yeah yeah, you know? yeah. And, and it's interesting you say that because there's a particular person who I know would not just encourage me, but bug me. And so I haven't told the person yet. Yeah, yeah, so. that's right. So that helps too. So you can mm -hmm. do things like this. You can do positive affirmations. Yeah. I've done it before, I can do it again. Mm -hmm. it, write it over and over again in, you know, every morning and mm -hmm. it'll get back in there in your subconscious mind and you'll just do it almost automatically, you know? Yeah. With that sort of thing so good yeah and those disbenefits you were talking about you can write them down too and just put a line through them cross them yeah up. yeah and every time you think of them just discipline yourself to replace it with a positive affirmation. positive yeah counter it yeah if okay the, if that dark thought comes in you just say i've done it before i'll do it again and so, mm -hmm. Many times that that dark little thought just dries up and get, blows away, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. benefit. Thank you. Yeah. 
and then investment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a variety of things you can do to invest. You can buy, uh, uh, you, you can uh, pay for a course, take a course. And then, oh, I put, you know, how to write this book, how to write poetry. And then, oh, I, you know, I took the course, I paid the money, I spent the time, I've got to write the book now. Mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Uh, or, and the longer yeah. you get into a project, just like in our hike, the more committed you become because you don't want to lose all that good investment. And I got this one really, really good poem on page 10. That's got to be published, even if I don't publish it, you know, and so yeah. <laughs> just for the sake of that one poem. No, I, I hear you. It's, it's interesting you say that because um, I wrote a poem for today, International Women's Day. Oh, right. And I already, um, I already put it up on LinkedIn and things like that. And I was like, right. this poem needs to get into a book. <laughs> yeah. So, so that ties to what you're saying. Yeah. Thank you. Thank That's you. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, you know, and then the, uh, the options piece. Um, <clears throat> do you have other projects that would pull you away from this? Yeah, the five and six and seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes we have little kids running around that are just don't seem to be optional. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got family for sure. Yes, and and then yes. sometimes you have to make decisions about what you're not going to do. Remove those activities as options so that you can focus on your book. Well, so I think the other example. thing. Yeah, that's a great example. Thank you, because as I even think about options, it's almost like. What can I spend my money on, you know, versus investing it into the publishing process? Right. Yeah. Thank well, you. Congratulations. That's wonderful. And thank you so much for um, uh, for contributing that to us. It's really excellent to to show how the commitment works in a real situation. And yeah, I, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Ed. That's great. Okay, I guess we're just about at the end of our hour, right? Here, and so is there any uh, last minute questions or comments? Anybody wants to say? Okay. Okay, then Rosemary, I guess it's back to you. All right, thank you everyone for participating and I hope everyone learned and some new ideas to bring out of this or reminded themselves of some ideas and things to work on. So I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. All right, and may you all achieve your New Year's resolutions. <laughs> thank you, goodbye. Take care, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.